Hello, equestrians of YouTube. Today, I wanted to make this video. Um, I've noticed my channel starting to grow a little bit, and that is amazing. Thank you to anyone who has subscribed uh, recently, in the past, whenever. It means so much, and um, yeah, I mean, I've noticed my channel starting to grow a little bit, and I felt like it was good to make this video to kind of set a base for this channel. I know it's still really small yet, but um, as my channel continues to grow, as I make more videos, I feel like this video would kind of set the bar for my training videos, for my regular viewers who know what I'm talking about and everything. So this video is not organized in any sort of way. I'm just going to be going off the top of my head here. Um, and what I think and my opinion. This video is not made to um, offend anyone in any sort of way. I'm not trying to say that you're a terrible writer if you do these things or anything like that. So I don't want you guys to think that I believe anyone that doesn't do what I do is a bad writer because that's not true. We all have different opinions. We all have different ways of doing things. You know, there's several ways to make things work. So um, we'll just get that out of the way. So, obviously, like any rider equestrian out there, um, most equestrians typically when they start riding, start riding with bits. I mean, we don't just jump into riding horses. Obviously, there's got to be somebody there to teach us, to start us. And my friend, doesn't matter her name, but... I started riding with a friend when I was very little and she kind of taught me the basics and everything like that and she always used bits on her horses because that's just what they had. I mean that's just what they always used. They always trained their horses with them and it wasn't anything to them really. And um, I grew up using bits for ages, for years. I was always using bits and always riding in them. Um, I used them on my horses for a while. Um, obviously you guys know I don't use them now, but Soccer and Sugar have been ridden in bits when I first started them. Um, I used bits and it was just like a normal thing. I never thought about it. I never thought it was bad just because that's what everyone had done. That's what I had been taught. It was just the normal thing to do. So I used bits on soccer and sugar for a while and um, later, maybe around like sixth grade I want to say, I was probably like 12 or 13, I discovered um, Horse Awareness here on YouTube. Um, it's called Think Like a Horse Now. The channel is run by a horse trainer named Rick Gore. And he taught me so, so much. You have, you guys have no idea. I started watching his videos for hours and hours. And some of his videos are very, very long. And I would just sit through them and watch the whole thing and learn and everything like that. And um, he came to this idea because he's a bitless trainer. And I started watching his bitless riding videos and... It was like this whole new thing to me. I was like, what? I've always used bits. Everyone has always used bits around me. I've never even thought of this like concept that no one needs bits because it's just what I always had. I always had them around. But after watching a lot of his videos, after watching other people's videos, experimenting with my own horses, trying it myself, um, forming my own opinions, watching other people who used bits, um, listening to other people tell me that I needed bits, I started to just question, why did I ever need a bit? I mean, I personally started Sugar, um, my paint mare, from the ground. Like, she knew nothing when I got her. Soccer knew, like, a little bit, but he didn't know, like, crap, really. I mean, I could sit on him, my dad could leave me around, that's about it. So, I basically started him as well, and... I still, even today, I kind of kick myself because Sugar, I've obviously can ride completely bitless. Um, I ride her in a rope halter all the time, but Soccer, um, I mean, he had some training before we got him, and then when I got him, I used a bit, and now I can't ride him in a halter anymore because he will just push straight through a halter. He won't respond to it. Same with BB. I didn't train BB, but um, my friend who trained her always trained her in a bit and always trained her in harsher bits, basically. And even today, she will just push straight through a hackamore. Cheddar! 
I ride her in a leverage hackamore. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is over here. But like a halter, I could not ride her and just, she would just completely ignore it. Um, but from learning and from watching and from researching all these things and watching videos about bits and it started to realize to me that I don't need bits to solve my problems for me. And I'm not saying like that's what bits are for to solve your problems but when we look like back at history and everything the reason bits were made the reason bits were created was because whoever created them I don't freaking know who but that person knew that horses mouths are very sensitive and they knew that they could get control of a horse by sticking a piece of freaking iron in their mouth ripping them around a little bit and that horse was going to give in to them. They already knew that this would cause pain and the animal's going to listen to me unless he wants to be in extreme pain. And I know people are going to argue with me and tell me I'm wrong. Like, bits don't hurt my horse. My horse likes his bit. That's fine. Think what you want. But um, that's what bits were created for. That's why they were invented was to cause pain, was to create pain to make a horse listen. And personally, my own opinion, I don't feel like any rider should have a, should need a bit, I guess I should say. Um, I feel like if you are a good enough rider, if you have a good enough relationship and connection with your horse, if you know how to problem solve, if you know how horses think, how they work, um, their instincts, how they use their instincts, how horses think, how they behave, how their herd behavior works, um, everything. If you know your horse, if you know horses in general, if you know how to ride, if you know how to train your horse, if your horse is trained well enough, you shouldn't need a bit to ride your horse. You shouldn't need a bit to solve your problem. If your horse is having a problem, if they're acting out, do you need a bit to cause pain and to jank on their mouth and hurt their mouth because you know that'll make them knock it off? Or will you make them spin in circles, move their feet, get their mind in the right space, make them focus on you rather than just pulling and ripping at their mouth and kicking them with spurs and causing this pain because you know that they're going to give in to you because they don't want to be in pain. I don't feel like animals, any animal, a horse, cattle, dogs, whatever, I don't feel like any animal should have to succumb to humans causing them pain and making them hurt just to solve a problem. If my horse doesn't want to cross water, am I going to, you know, hit him with my whip and kick him with my spurs to make him go? That's not obviously relating to bits, but no, I don't need to cause my horse pain to get him to move across the water. Maybe my horse has never crossed water before. If that's the case, I would get off, lead him through it, let him realize that nothing's going to happen, like this is safe, he can trust me. If my horse is acting out or attacking other horses, am I going to rip on his bit? No. I'd spin him in circles, um, make him move his feet, make him work, not rip on his mouth and cause him pain just because he's doing what he's he's designed to do. If horses are herd animals. If my horse turns around to attack another horse that's riding behind me, obviously that's in his instincts, but I'm going to tell him that it's not okay. I'm going to make sure he knows it's not okay because it puts me in danger, but I'm not going to make him feel harsh pain because of it. Um, with Sugar, I haven't used a bit in her, on her in years. In years. And I started her from the ground. I'm telling you, that horse has more trust in me and I have more trust in her because I know her so well and I she knows that I've never caused her such extensive extreme pain not that bits cause like horrible awful pain but if they don't cause horrible awful pain and your horse responds to one fine if it doesn't hurt your horse or anything then why have one why not just use a hack more because honestly if I was a horse and I had to choose whether do I want this thing sitting in my mouth all day when I, it's hard for me to eat, it's hard for me to drink because it's always this metal is in my mouth all the time or would I just rather have a hackamore? Obviously if I was a horse I would just choose a hackamore because it would be easier, it would be more comfortable, I wouldn't have to worry about this stupid thing in my mouth all the time. Um, anyways with sugar, 
We have so much trust in each other because we've worked together for so many years. And obviously not every horse is like that. You have to build that relationship for a long time. But anything, I know I can do anything with her, whether it's a brand new experience, whether we've done it a million times, I know I can do it without a bit because we have that connection. If she screws up or if she does something wrong, I will let her know, but I don't need to tear at her mouth to let her know. Like I don't need to cause her pain to make her think that, oh, that was wrong. I need to try something else because that's how horses are. When you tell them that that's wrong, you gotta try something else. That's what they think. A horse is like a trial and error when you're training horses. Um, they're gonna try something and try this and try that and you have to tell them, no, that's wrong until they get it right. And then once they realize this is right, this is right, you have to reward them. And with Sugar, I mean, we've been working so good together for so many years. If she messes up, I'll spin her in circles, back her up, um, make her do it again and again and again until she gets tries something else and gets it right. And then she realizes, oh, okay, this is right. This is what she wants me to do. I don't need to, you know, whip her or yank at her mouth or anything like that to let her know that, you know, she's doing something wrong or that I want something else from her. And it honestly, it makes me really mad when I see horses that are doing nothing wrong. I went to the state fair last year and this horse, he was such a good horse. He was so calm and relaxed and he was in the show ring, somebody was riding him. It was like, I don't know, Western Pleasure or something like that. Um, and he was doing great. He was just riding around the circle, really calm, head was low. And this woman was just kicking him and just ripping at his bit. And she was so aggressive and this horse was so, relaxed it was almost like he was so used to it he was so used to this kicking and and extreme hard pulling on his mouth that he had no reaction to it anymore and i feel like that's what you get when you rip at horses mouths all the time you pull so hard and have super hard hands a horse's mouth eventually it will i don't know how to say it it goes hard it gets hard like a callus um and eventually you can pull out a mouth a horse's mouth so hard and they hardly have any reaction anymore because they're so used to it their mouth has stiffened and hardened to that that behavior that it doesn't bother them anymore and I think that's really really sad that a horse has been pulled on so many times so hard like that that they don't even react to it anymore that's not normal behavior for horses I also cannot stand seeing barrel racers not to bag on all barrel racers, I mean I've barrel raced too, but some of them have these massive big bits with these long shanks and you know they're going around the barrels and their horse's mouth is wide open because they're trying to relieve that pain and it's like, okay the little s hackamore, which is the one I use, is the top rated hackamore for barrel racing. And I've used it on almost every horse I've broken out. I've used it on Soccer Sugar. I use it on BB right now. And BB pushes through things. She will test a rider. And she will push through you. She will she'll do all this crap. It's really annoying. But I've ridden her in it. I broke out Luna in it. I've used it on Starburst. And I'm like, why is that necessary? Why do you need such a huge big bit to get the point across to your horse that he needs to turn there? Obviously, to me, obviously, that just means, like, you clearly don't know how to work with horses. You think you need this huge, long bit to cause all this pain just to get them to turn around the barrel. And a lot of people don't understand that all that shank and the huge bit causes pain. It's not just signaling to your horse. And what they say when it comes to bits is 10 pounds of pressure per inch of shank on your um, bit or hackamore. That's why everybody says like the the snaffle is a gentle bit or it's a soft bit because it's just the bit. There is no shank on it. It's um, has no leverage whatsoever. And I see these people barrel racing or even just riding their horses and their horses are perfectly good but they have like these long shank bits or hackamores on them and they're pulling so hard and their horse's mouth is open trying to get away from the pain and I'm just thinking like let's say like a 10 inch 
there's these like um, bit hackamore combos um, that you can get and they have like 10 inch long shanks on them they're ridiculous and I'm thinking when people use those like your horse is literally feeling a hundred pounds of pressure when you pull so freaking hard on his face that's how much pressure he feels on his mouth and his jaw because the leverage works when you pull back the chin strap goes up and it pushes on your horse's jaw to create more pain. Um, I have a hackamore that I don't use very much for this reason because it has like seven inch shanks on it and I just don't like how heavy and aggressive it is. I use it once in a while but not very often. Um, if I were to put that hackamore on soccer and then pull super hard on him, he would be feeling 70 pounds of pressure on his jaw and his nose because a hackamore, a mechanical hackamore is a leverage hackamore basically and when you pull back on that it also puts the chin strap up and the nose band goes down so it's like a twisting motion and people rip and pull on their horses with super long shanks like that you know how much pain that creates would you want 70 100 pounds of pressure come ramming down on your nose bone and your jaw or your mouth I doubt it. um but yeah I'm kind of just rambling on now um basically my point in my opinion is that if you know your horse if you've ridden a lot if you're a good rider you understand horses you understand their instincts their herd behavior um if you understand horses and their mindset and if you're a good rider and you know how to fix problems and you know how to communicate with horses then no rider needs a bit no horse needs a bit if you can work with a horse even if that horse has never had any sort of training in his life if you start a horse to be soft and to respect you and to trust you then you will never need a bit in a horse's mouth never you will never need to cause that animal pain to respect you. You will never have to hurt that animal to get your point across and to work with them and to teach them. You will never need that. If you know what you're doing, if you know your horse, you understand, then there never needs to be metal in your horse's mouth. All right, guys, so that's my video on my opinion on bits. If you disagree, then that is totally fine. I can't say that I haven't had people disagree with me in the past. I have people all the time tell me that I'm ridiculous, but that is fine. If you have your own opinion, then you have your own opinion. Um, that's just mine, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you learned something or maybe thought of something you never thought of before. So. Um, if your horse doesn't need a bit, I strongly encourage you not to use one on them. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.